Oh, the free day on this is amazing. Oh, it looks like I'm really in the game. Hi, I'm Pox. Hi, I'm Rikable. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys show, and today is a show like any other show. <laughs> today's, today's a great show. We've got great things for you. We've got hacking this time around. Kind of. More so than the last few episodes. <laughs> so, continuing on from our last show, we have some more of the 3DS. Ooh, the, th the 3DS. Ooh. It's all eh. 3D and SE. <laughs> Essie. Does that mean it's slutty? <laughs> it's, it's got dual screens. Um, <clears throat> and dual, well, and three, dual... And tri cameras. <laughs> would, you, would you count the top screen as one screen or two screens, technically, because it has pixels that shift? Ooh. Later, yeah, later. it's got three screens. Two and a half screens? And it's got uh -huh. a very loose top. <laughs> Did you see it? It just fell down <laughs> for no, no I reason. I didn't see that yet. <laughs> uh, but that's the, 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 so the 3DS is like the DS, but slightly fatter and looser and um, <laughs> in 3D. Uh, <laughs> but that's the, the today's show is on running homebrew on this thing. You what? can you can do like from day one. It's hackable. Uh, it's a hardware hack, though. You can't just do this on any any of them. You have to have this little uh, Ace card, which is Ace card two I. Yeah. So this little guy right here, it holds a micro SD card, which you can fill up with uh, any kind of homebrew you want. Mm -hmm. So this is like eight gigs right here. So it's got like a bazillion Nintendo, Super Nintendo games, Lemmings, uh, a Twitter client, an FTP server. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the goodies. Probably even an IRC client. Yeah, there is an IRC client. <laughs> <laughs> but what's really cool is that if you've been into the DSC before, is that this has been around for a while. Um, around when the DS was around, or when it was first launched. Right. So it's just really cool that this method of you know launching homebrew has been just it just continually works yeah so the, the right now the only um these are called flash or flash cards the cards that allow you to run homebrew on on these D nintendo ds type machines the only one working right now is ace card and uh when you get it you have to do the latest firmware on that on that and uh as of the taping of the show the latest firmware that you download from nintendo's website which Includes a cool little OK Go video. Um, it works. So okay. don't update beyond that yet. <laughs> yeah. Before you run an update, always check the flashcards website, which are, whichever one you're using. At this point, the Ace Card's the only one. You know, Ace Card 2i is what I'd recommend. I believe it's also what Pox would recommend. And, and it there's counterfeits, so don't get the counterfeits. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have procedures? <laughs> Um, and a step-by-step -step for how to update or put the firmware on the Ace Card 2i. It's really simple. You download said firmware onto Where? your microphone. Where do you get this firmware at? You go to the website, which we have what in our What website? Sh the, sh the one in our show notes at twosmartguys.com. You, you go to that website. You, you put it in there. <laughs> and then you, you download the latest firmware, the official firmware, and you put it on your little micro SD slot card and you, you put it onto the root yeah the root you put it in the root slap it in the reader and you launch it from the ds and it runs and you make sure you got a lot of power okay <laughs> yeah you get make sure you have it plugged in or else you end up with a ds like raggables or a ds a card like raggables <laughs> it wasn't because I didn't leave the power on, it was because I updated the DSi first. Yeah, so follow the instructions very carefully. So, what's some of the homebrew out there that people can run for their 3DS? So, some of the homebrew that they can run. I crashed the system. <laughs> it's locked up? Mm-hmm. Um, never, never, ever take out <laughs> 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 the... As the micro SD card while it's still in the DS, 
You want to take out the ace card first before removing the micro SD. So you have a list of current homebrew that you'd recommend people go check out? Uh, for myself, I was stoked to find out somebody ported Lemmings because okay. uh, I'm a big Lemmings fan and I thought being able to use a stylus on a screen was ideal for Lemmings. Because they've, they've made updated versions of it that run on um, the PSP and PS3 and all that, but they still use a joystick and it's just not, it's really not right for this game because you have to, you know, click on the little Lemmings. So that's uh, one of them. So there's a Lemmings port. Um, there's, I mean, as always, the emulators, NES emulators, SNES emulators, uh, the Sega Genesis emulators, and then a few other little interesting uh, utilities like the FTP server. Right. A server, yeah. not, a, not a client. Okay. So some notes um, on the different emulators. The Super Nintendo emulator requires that you make a folder called SNES on the root of your micro SD card to put all your ROMs into. Um, it also doesn't work with zips. you got to unzip them. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So that's a note for that. The, the okay. Nintendo emulator doesn't seem to care. Just throw the ROMs in there anywhere you can navigate. Okay. Wherever you want them to be. The Lemmings game, it needs to be in a folder called Lemmings DS, capital letters on the DS, and you need to have the config text file in the root of the SD card for it to work. Okay. So each piece of homebrew has a s pretty specific set of instructions on how uh, a folder structure and file structure needs to be set up. Right. Uh, the FTP emulator apparently has its own config file that you have to make sure is set correctly. Okay. So before, you know, trying to run any of these homebrew applications, just make sure to read through the README to make sure that you have your SD card set up properly. And if we come across any piece of homebrew that is extensive in configuration, we might cover that later on. Yes. So all, all this homebrew that is out currently is made for the DS. So it doesn't really take full advantage of the new processor and the fact that it has more RAM, which is a big thing for emulators. How much RAM does it have? It's got a whopping X-ray, 128 megabytes of super high-speed, faster than DDR2 memory in it. Now you're just throwing shit out there. No, really. They they said it was, it was faster than D it was twice as fast as DDR2. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in comparison to the older models, how much is 128 megabytes really? Uh, well, let's put it this way: the original had what four megs? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then the DSi uh, has 16. So <laughs> jumping up from 16 to 128 megabytes of RAM, you've got a lot of room to play with. So emulators, a whole bunch of other homebrew applications now have a bigger sandbox. Uh, resolution. Uh, the screen resolution is much higher on the 3DS. Wait, wait, wait. Which screen? The top one or the bottom one? The top screen's higher. No, I think the bottom one's the same resolution. The top screen is higher overall if you count. Well, you are. You can bump both, you know, angles, but that, that's bullshit to me. No, because when you have it in 2D mode, it's using all the pixels. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So you've got the full... Um, full resolution to deal, work with. Uh, so yeah, the emula the, right now it's stretching everything on the emulators. Like Mario, he's got okay. the weirdest looking nose I've ever <laughs> seen. Because it's like cutting half the pixel, or not not exactly half, it's like just a few of the pixels had to get cut out of the... Right. You see, the thing is, is that it, the, the top screen is a 6 by 9 aspect ratio? Yeah. It's a, it's a different aspect ratio and it's a different resolution, period. It's a higher resolution, so they have to, you know, interp interpolate up higher. Interpolate. Yeah, interpolate. To, to have it go up <laughs> to a higher resolution. So hopefully in the future, the uh, homebrew that's been ported over to the 3DS uh, will update to accommodate for that. One of the interesting notes that is uh, some of these apps, they've gone away. They're not available for download anymore. And one of them went away because they started making iOS game uh, apps. There's a really cool color app with an exclamation point, or colors exclamation point, and there's all this cool artwork I was seeing that was done, and I went to go download it, and they're like, oh, well, you know, we stopped 
making available the download for the DS because we actually make an official App Store app for the iPhone and iPad. So is that the only app from the uh, homebrew scene for the DS that's been ported over to the App Store? That's, or migrated in this that, instance? That's the only one that I saw, but I would imagine that there many others were because I went to download them and they were just missing. <laughs> well, that's really kind of cool and interesting that the homebrew scene that started on the DS as like a development testing area, get your feel, um, feedback from users, and then you go over to iOS <laughs> and make your living. But um, And according to GoGeeks, it seems that a lot of homebrew developers are going to iOS since that's where the larger user base is, and you can actually make money off of it, too. That's right. How do you make money on homebrew for the DS right now? You don't. So hopefully Nintendo will get wise and they'll make an app store that store for, for the indie 3DS. Yeah, for the 3DS for indie developers because right now it was a big complaint that you know, if you want to make downloadable games for Nintendo, you can't. You can't. You have to be a big studio guy that, you know, is already in cahoots with Nintendo. <laughs> Right, uh, so people can develop and publish apps for the Xbox Live. Uh, was there anything like that for the PlayStation Network? You know, I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I don't think they're as low-level like indie stuff for the, the PlayStation Network that I, I'm aware of. See, and here's my thing with, ni with Nintendo, is that in the earlier days, they had that quality seal you know, approved by Nintendo or whatever. So, with the Wii, uh, Sony just kind of let their guard down, and all this shovelware crap just started coming out. Why not just open up their SDK to, you know, indie producers if they're already accepting that kind of crap to begin with? How bad is it going to be to just let indie developers put stuff on to the Wii? It's not going to make it any worse than it already is. Yeah, they can make it like a you know the whole um, segregated <laughs> community. Like, here's the official Nintendo sealed stuff, and here's the you know stuff that other people put out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if 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 they if they really want to be like that, they could. Uh, I think they, they should. <laughs> I mean, they might as well. They can't lose anything. Do the whole Apple thing. You know, we'll split it with you. You know, uh, sixty thirty or whatever. <laughs> Or Nintendo will probably be fifty-fifty. Well, you know, well, I, I'd rather pay a lower price for a game like that than paying full price for some POS Wii title that doesn't really work or it's got some network branding on it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Did I mention that we're a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network as well as content partners on Nevio and YouTube? <laughs> We're content whores. I'm sure that's that's how they think of us. No, but seriously though, if you want to uh, get more of these crazy shows and Raggable's rants, uh, twosmartguys.com is the main place, as well as um, our other networks, as aforementioned, where you can yeah. subscribe and comment to your heart's delight. Yeah. And, and so, stay tuned to us for show notes uh, covering the homebrew that we talked about and installation instructions. And if you're more of an expert than us, let us know. Post um, uh, uh, response, video responses, and or if you want to be on the show, um, email me. I'm pox at twosmartguys.com if you made any homebrew yourself and would care to show it to the world. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Uh, we do this live show every Wednesday night um, at 10.30 Mountain Time. So see you guys next week. See you next week. This is the Natural Smart Guys production.